So anyways, I was uh, talking about our render batch here. Uh, each batch is going to basically store an offset into this vertex buffer object. When we call GL draw arrays, we can specify that we want to start at a certain point in the vertex buffer object. That way we don't need a separate vertex buffer object for each of our different draw calls that we have to make. So here we're going to say, we'll go ahead and say public. And uh, let's go ahead and do the offset. So we're going to say GL, we're going to say, yeah, we'll say GL event offset. And then let's also do a GL uint num uh, vertices. That'll be the number of vertices we need to draw. And let's also say what texture it is. GL uint texture. Uh, just like that. And that should be all we need to do for that. Let's go ahead and now make a vector of render batches. Render batch. We'll say render batches. And finally, let's go ahead and make another function uh, that will actually create these render batches. We'll do it right above create vertex array. We'll say void uh, create render batches. And let's copy that and put it right above create vertex array. Oops. And this auto indenting is annoying. I think I might just let it happen. <laughs> All right, create render batches. What we need to do is we need to loop through our uh, array of glyphs. And for each glyph, we need to add it to a batch. And if we get a glyph with a new texture, we need to make a new batch. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a current batch, uh, which will be... Uh, just, we'll just go ahead and push one back at the start. So we'll just, first let's go ahead and check if we have any glyphs. So let's say if glyphs, uh, oops, needs to be sprite batch colon colon, create render batches. If glyphs.empty, this is the same thing as saying if glyphs.size is equal to zero. If glyphs.empty, let's go ahead and just return because there's no batches we need to create. Uh, and then what we can do is actually uh, create our first batch using our first glyph. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do is say, uh, we'll say, what is it? Render batches dot push back. Now this push back function, uh, usually what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pass in a glyph object. Or sorry, we're going to want to pass in a render batch object. There's actually another function called in place back that lets us do something pretty clever. If we go into render batch and we add a constructor, so let's go ahead and do that, render batch. And for the constructor, let's go ahead and give it three values. We're gonna say uh, GLU int offset, GLU int, make sure these are named differently than the uh, num vertices, named differently than the actual, excuse me, variables, GLU int texture. And let's go ahead and use a initializer list. We'll say offset, offset, and we'll say num vertices, num vertices, and texture, texture, and then it'll just be an empty function. Let's copy that. All right, so this is uh, how we're going to actually set up our render batch. So one thing we could do is we could make a render batch uh, like render batch my batch and we could use its constructor right here to set up its stuff so we can say uh, let's see what are the parameters we have offset num vertices and texture since this is the first batch the offset will be zero uh, the num vertices will always be six since we whenever we do gl draw arrays with sprite we have six here that's what that stands for and then the texture is going to be glyphs uh, zero dot texture or arrow texture. So this is one way we could do it. We could make my batch and we could push back my batch. Uh, but what this actually does is it makes an intermediate batch on the stack and then it makes a copy of that batch. This is, we're, we're basically making something and then immediately throwing it away. There's a faster way to do this with a function called in place back, really useful function. And this takes out the middleman. All we do is instead of passing my batch into in place back, 
we just take the parameter list for the constructor of my batch and we put it in here and what this is going to do is in place back is going to create a new object for us in render batches and initialize it without us having to do an intermediate copy and we can do it in one line of code it's pretty neat all right so this will set up our first render batch uh, and now uh, what we need to do is we need to make sure we add uh, all of um, glyphs vertices to the vertex buffer object so let's go ahead and make a new vector of vertices vector and we're going to say vertex vertices and std vector vertex vertices and anytime we add a new glyph we're going to go ahead and just uh, uh, push back the vertices onto uh, the vertices vector from that glyph uh, and to make things quick uh, what we can do is we can instead of calling pushback a bunch of times uh, to, uh, uh, to and, and constantly resizing this vector what we can do is go ahead and actually reserve some memory for it this will make it slightly faster we can say vertices.reserve and what this is going to do is it's going to basically tell um, our vertices vector how big we think it's going to be and we actually have an idea that it's going to be the size of glyphs dot size times six and that's going to be pretty much spot on uh, there's going to be six vertices for glyph so we're going to push back six vertices for each glyph very nice so that will speed things up a little bit uh, so now if we want to uh, add to this vertices vector we could call push back uh, but since we're already doing it uh, this way anyways let's go ahead instead of calling reserve let's go ahead and resize and the difference here is instead of just allocating a little memory for it and then keeping size of vertices at zero. If we call vertices.resize, what that's going to do is actually set the size of vertices to glyphs.size uh, times six. So we've basically just allocated all of the memory we need for all of these vertices that we're going to add from glyphs. And now what we can do is just treat it as an array. And treating it as an array and just stepping through it with the square brackets is a lot faster than calling pushback a bunch of times because pushback does a little bit of extra checking. So let's go ahead and have another variable, int current vertex, like that. We'll just say int cv equals zero, and we'll say this is current vertex. And we need to add six vertices to uh, our vert vertices vector. So let's go ahead and say vertices cv uh, and then we're just going to say equals and we'll say glyphs zero dot or arrow uh, and we're going to start with the top left vertex. So if you remember whenever we, let's go ahead and go back to paint, whenever we made our sprite class we specified vertices in this order. We had uh, three vertices for this triangle. We went one, two, three. And then we had three vertices for this triangle and we went one, two, three. We're gonna do the same thing here. So we're gonna start with the top left. So here's the top left. And then we can say CV plus plus here to increment CV. So we're going on to the next vertex. But what we can actually do here is we can do it in one line of code by saying CV plus plus right here. If you say CV++ inside the square brackets, it's not going to add one to CV until after this line of code executes. If you wanted to add to CV before the line executes, you could put the plus plus in front. And I believe I've showed you that before, but I may not have. So we're just gonna put CV++ here. And then we can just copy this five more times. <clears throat> so the six vertices are gonna be top left, then bottom left, then bottom right, then bottom right again for the next triangle, top right, and then finally top left again, just like that. So this will set up our first render batch. Now we need to loop through all of the rest of the glyphs. Uh, so let's go ahead and say int cg equals one, and this is current glyph. And we can do a for loop here. We can actually use, we can actually declare cg in the for loop. So for int cg equals one. Notice we're not starting at zero because we already did the first batch. cg is less than glyphs.size. We'll say cg plus plus. Now for each glyph, we're going to basically do uh, this stuff again. We're going to in place a new render batch and we're going to add some vertices. So let's go ahead and copy this. 
Uh, this pretty much works exactly the same, but now instead of saying glyphs zero dot texture, we're going to say glyphs cg dot texture. All right, so now this is not taking advantage of the fact that multiple glyphs of the same texture can actually belong to the same render batch. What we actually want to do is not in place back a render batch unless the current texture is different from the previous texture. So let's go ahead and check that. Let's say if glyphs cg arrow texture is not equal to glyphs cg minus one arrow texture. So if the texture is different, then we're going to in place a new render batch. Otherwise, all we're going to do is increase the size of the current render batch, which is the last render batch in our render batches vector. So we can say render batches dot back. That will get you the last element. And then we can say dot. Uh, we're going to say num vertices. We're going to say that plus equals six because we just added six more vertices to that render batch. Now you'll notice all of the vertices are getting put in one uh, array here, one vector here, and we're going to upload it to one VBO, but these render batches are going to let us uh, make a bunch of different draw calls on that VBO. And now here, this offset actually isn't correct. Uh, the offset should not be zero. It should only be zero the first time. Let's go ahead and store the offset. We're going to say int offset equals zero. So we'll go ahead and, for correctness, we'll put offset here. And then anytime we uh, make six new vertices, we're going to say offset plus equals six. Just like that. So now we can say offset here, and we can say offset plus equals six. And that's that. That will create our render batches. Finally, let's go ahead and upload the vertex data to our vertex buffer object. We're going to call GL bind buffer, GL vertex uh, array. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, what am I doing? GL array buffer. There it is. GL array buffer. And we're going to pass in VBO. This is too long of an episode. And now what we want to do is if we, we actually, we, we already checked if glyphs is empty. So we know that we have some vertices here. We're going to go ahead and upload it. So we're going to say GL buffer data. And there's actually a trick here. Now, normally what we could do is we could say GL buffer data and we can say our target is GL array buffer. Uh, the size is going to be the number of bytes. So it's going to be uh, vertices dot size times size of vertex. Vertex. And the data is going to be a pointer to the beginning of vertices. And we could get the address of the first element. Uh, there's actually a shortcut for that that I don't think I've showed you. You can say vertices dot data. It's the same thing as saying the address of the first element. And then finally, for usage, uh, before we used, I believe, GL static draw. Uh, for this, since we're re-uploading it every single frame, pretty much, we're going to say GL stream draw. Uh, the, the, these, um, actually, we'll say, we'll say GL dynamic draw. Since we're keeping the same vertex buffer in memory, we're just changing it many times. A GL stream draw is if you're, you're pretty much Binding the vertex buffer once and creating it and then using it once and then pretty much throwing it away. Dynamic draw means you might render it a few times. You might make a few changes to it. Um, you can tweak uh, this parameter to see what happens. Usually it's not going to make much of a big difference anyways. So this is one thing we could do. And then we're done here. This will go ahead and create uh, our vertex buffer and upload the data. Uh, but another thing we could do is there's a trick called orphaning the buffer. Since we're using the same vertex buffer object here, there's going to already be some data in here. And when we call this, it's going to have to overwrite that data, and that takes a little bit of time. There's a little trick we can do where we tell OpenGL, hey, I don't want the old buffer anymore at all. You can just throw it away and give me a brand new buffer, and it'll be a little bit faster. Uh, so what, what we do for that is instead of passing in vertices.data here, we pass in null pointer like that. And then... We make another call. Uh, so, so this line right here will orphan the buffer. So orphan the buffer. And then we actually upload the data. Upload the data. And we're going to upload it with GL buffer sub data. This is another function call that can upload a certain range of data. We're going to upload to GL array buffer. And the offset is going to be zero. The size is going to be the same thing here. Vertices.size times size of vertex. 
and the data is going to be vertices.data. And there you have it. This will uh, orphan a buffer and upload the data. It's the faster way to do it. And finally, we want to unbind our buffer. So GL bind buffer and GL array buffer, and we'll say zero. All right, we are almost there, folks. Uh, there's probably some bugs here, so it may not work the first time. Let's go ahead and copy create render batches. We're going to put that after sort glyphs. And finally, we need uh, to program the render batch function. And all this is going to do is it's going to loop through all of our, uh, our batches, our, what is it, uh, our render batches, and draw them all. Uh, and anytime we call begin, let's go ahead and clear all of our vectors so we make sure we aren't uh, increasing the size of our vectors or anything like that. Uh, we don't want to keep uh, all of the vector uh, data in memory because then we're going to keep adding on more and more vertices until we overflow uh, our memory. So we're going to say render batches clear, and we're going to say, uh, let's see, what other vectors do we have? Vertices will automatically be destroyed at the end of this because it's a stack variable. Uh, do we have other? We have glyphs. We need to say glyphs.clear. Uh, glyphs.clear. What clear does is it doesn't free all of the memory exactly. What it does is it just changes the size of the vector back to zero so that you can replace all the data in the vector with new data. Uh, if you want to actually free the memory completely, there's other tricks, but we don't really need to do that here. It's actually beneficial to keep the memory uh, allocated because it'll be a little bit faster. Okay, and so now we need the render batch function. So let's go ahead and loop through all of our batches. So we're going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than render batches dot size, i plus plus. And then we are going to say gl bind texture. We're going to say gl texture 2d. And the texture we bind will be render batches i uh, dot texture. And then we're going to draw it with GL draw arrays. And the mode will be GL triangles. First is going to be render batches. So here's where the offset comes in handy, dot offset. And then the count, the number of vertices we're going to render, is render batches i dot num vertices. And there we go, there's Sprite Batch. I have probably forgotten something since I just made this whole thing from scratch. Let's go ahead and try using it and see if anything gets drawn to the screen. I have a good uh, hunch that it's not going to, but let's just see what happens. So let's go into maingame.cpp. Uh, and actually, let's go to maingame.h so we can have ourselves a Sprite Batch here. Let's include Benjen Sprite Batch .h. And we will put our sprite batch in here. Sprite batch, and we'll call it sprite batch. Okay, so we need to call init on the sprite batch. We'll do that in maingame.cpp. Uh, and we're going to do that in init systems. We'll do it after init shaders. So sprite batch.init. And we are going to, I believe, init. It has no parameters right now, so that's good. Uh, now what we need to do is when we go to draw game, let's go ahead and get rid of our sprites. We're not going to use those anymore. We'll keep the sprite class because it might come in handy for a few things, but the sprite class is very, very inefficient, so we're going to end up getting rid of it. And we don't need any sprites here. We can go ahead and delete our sprites vector. Get rid of that. Looks good. And back into main game. Now let's go down to where we draw. So a lot of this is going to remain exactly the same. We want to have a uh, GL active texture uh, right here. And we need to upload uh, all of the uniforms. We're going to use the same shader. Uh, we're going to use time. We'll all use all that stuff. Uh, we're going to set the camera matrix and all that. Uh, and now the only difference is uh, where do we, uh, we, okay, we just need to now call our, uh, our sprite batch function. So let's go ahead and say sprite batch uh, dot begin. And we're going to go ahead and sort by texture. That works. And then we'll say sprite batch 
dot end. And finally, sprite batch dot render batch. So between begin and end is where we're going to actually draw our batches. Uh, so let's just try drawing one sprite for now. We're going to say sprite batch dot and draw. And in here, the destination rectangle, let's go ahead and we can pass in a glmvec4 uh, rectangle. So we'll, we'll make one here. In the future, we're going to have like a specific game object that we can pass in so we don't have to construct this manually. Uh, but we can say glm, uh, we'll say vec4 and position. And let's go ahead and initialize it with uh, x and y at 0 and then width and height at 50. Like that. And for completeness, we'll say 0.0f since these are floats. And for the UV rect, we're going to say glm vec4 UV. It's going to be 0.0f, 0.0f, 1.0f, 1.0f. And the depth, we'll go ahead and just pass in 0 for the depth. We're not worried about depth right now. So the destination rectangle will be position. The UV rect will be UV. Uh, the texture, now the sprite, I believe, handled all the texture loading for us when we initialized it. Uh, texture path. So it just called get texture here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I actually forgot what the path was, but I already deleted it. That's okay. I can get it back for us. Uh, let's go ahead and get a texture. So glunit texture equals resource manager get texture. Uh, and this is going to be Benjin resource manager get texture. Need to include resource manager, it looks like. Benjin resource manager. Okay, and that should fix that. There we go, and it returns a GL texture. So GL texture. Benjin GL texture. Texture equals this get texture function. And for the path, which I deleted, let's go ahead and I can get it back for us if I just don't screw anything up here. Uh, here we go. I'm going to copy this and redo everything. This is not the best way to do that. There we go. Here's our texture. So it's textures, Jimmy Jump Pack, PNG, character right standing dot PNG. There we go. And so the third parameter here is the texture. We're going to say texture dot ID. Uh, the depth will just say 0.0F. We don't care about depth right now. And for the color, let's go ahead and say color. And it doesn't have a constructor, so let's just make ourselves a color. Color, color, and color dot uh, bingin color. Colon, colon, color. There we go. Color dot r equals, we'll say, 255. Color dot g equals 255. Color dot b equals 255. And color dot a equals 255. So it'll just be white and not transparent. And we'll pass that in. So this should hopefully draw us a texture to the screen. And we are about to find out. Put that there and let's run it. If it doesn't work, which is a good chance it won't, I will pause the video and figure out what I did wrong and then show you. All right, we got an access violation here. Uh, and I actually think I know exactly what's wrong. We never actually bound the vertex attribute array. So let's go ahead and do that. GL bind vertex array. Remember, we made that vertex array object. We have to bind it before we can actually draw anything. Uh, and we're going to bind the array VAO. And then we need to remember to unbind it at the bottom. All right, let's try that again. And I see we have a little shape there. It's a little messed up. I don't know if you can see it there. Uh, but we do indeed have something on the screen. Now I will pause the video and see what is going on with it, why it's so flat. The bug I had was quite simple. I accidentally added UV rect instead of des rect here uh, to the position. So this should be des rect.w here and des rect.w here. And let's make sure everything else looks right. That looks right. There we go. So now we should get a small little guy on the screen. There we go. He's super teensy tiny. Let's zoom in and see him. There he is moving around. 
That is so neat. So our sprite batch works. Uh, and let's try rendering two little guys. So let's go back to main, uh, main game. There we go. And let's do two of these. So let's draw another one. And uh, let's actually only do this once static texture so we don't have to keep getting the texture over and over again. Just putting a static keyword here will make sure it only gets initialized once. And we'll do uh, the same position, I guess. Actually, let's do position plus GLM vec4. Let's add 50 pixels in the x direction, zero pixels in the y direction, zero dimension, zero dimension, like that. That should work. There we go. That'll add some some pixels in there. So this should make two guys. There we go. We got two guys side by side walking around. All right. So we have 40 FPS here. Let's crank it up and see how many guys we can get. So I'm going to draw them all in the same place. So it'll look like we're only drawing two guys, but we're actually going to be drawing a lot. So for int i equals zero, i i is less than a thousand i plus plus. Let's try to draw a thousand of these little guys. Actually, this is going to be 2,000 sprites. Let's run it now. And we get about 14 FPS. So there's a few things we can still do to improve this. But for drawing 2,000 textures with shader effects, uh, this is a lot better than we were getting uh, with just the normal sprite uh, class, where each one was in its own draw call. Uh, I'm going to do a few checks, make sure I did everything right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. If I continue the video after I ended it, it's because I found something that was wrong with it. Uh, but as we zoom in, you're going to notice the actual uh, FPS is going down. Uh, the reason for that is uh, it's having to re-render these pixels over and over and over again. So the larger it gets, the more pixels it has uh, to actually render. Uh, so what's happening here is we're... Uh, the size of this on the screen right here, every time we draw a sprite, it has to do all the math for all those pixels. It has to run the pixel shader. And we have 2,000 sprites over and over again doing that. The graphics card just can't keep up. Let's see what happens if we make it really, really small. Let's see if the graphics card uh, can keep up with that. So it looks like it's an issue with how many vertices we have up until about 12 FPS. Then once we make it bigger, it starts to get lower because the pixels start to be an issue. All right, I will catch you guys in the next video. Uh, we're going to do a few more things with moving stuff around so it doesn't behave all jerky like this. Uh, we might optimize our sprite batch some more. Uh, and we'll do lots of cool stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, one quick thing I forgot. We actually have a memory leak uh, because we call new glyph here when we make all of our glyphs, but we don't ever uh, delete them before we clear glyphs. If we call glyphs.clear here, we're going to basically orphan all these pointers. These are going to be dangling pointers, and we're going to have a huge memory leak that gets worse and worse. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick with a for loop. For int i equals zero, i is less than uh, glyphs.size, size i plus plus, and we are going to uh, delete glyphs i and that will make sure we don't have our memory leak uh, now there's some things we can do to optimize this stuff i've been looking around but there's a lot of room for improvement we will do that in some future tutorials but there's a few other things i want to do first for now uh, this is plenty of uh, sprites for us to use for our small games so i will see you next time